The Astros are back home on a big and bright Friday night with Jose Altuve coming off a four extra base hit game. Francisco Lindor and the Cleveland Indians are in town for the first of a three game weekend series from Minute Maid Park. Hi everybody, welcome to Astros Baseball. I'm Todd Callis alongside Jeff Blum. Last time the Astros were in town, Blummer, it was the shortest homestand of the year, a two-gamer. Now they're home for the longest, a 10-gamer. Nice to be home for that amount of time. It's good to have you here for this nice <laughs> long homestand. We battled through that two-game uh, homestand last time, but it's good to finally unpack. When you last saw the Cleveland Indians, which was three weeks ago, it was the wrap-up to a really good series. What's happened since? Uh, a lot of good things for the Houston Astros. They have been on a roll 19 games since that series. You see the 15 and 4 record is nice to see. They have won six straight series, went into New York, played great. Six and one on that last road trip was a beautiful thing to see, but the pitching has been good. But actually, the offense is what's been picking it up. Astros have played very well since that series. On the other hand, Cleveland left that series three games over 500. They are eight and 10 cents. What have you seen as a big difference? Well, I think the OPS uh, under 700 for the Cleveland Indians tells you that they're not getting on base. They're not slugging the ball. You see the home runs uh, 13 less than what the Houston Astros are doing. But the runs per game, 3.8. When that matches your ERA, you're not going to do too many good things. It's going to be a tough stretch for them, but you see on the Astros' side, offense is going strong, pitching is going strong, and expect them to beat the Cleveland Indians with the fastball tonight. Indians coming off a 2-4 and four homestand. The Astros coming back from a 6-1 and one road trip, which included grand slams, home runs. Even in Miami, another grand slam, and Jake Marisnik a big night. The offense was clicking on all cylinders. We'll have more, including hearing from Julia Morales right around the corner. should be a really fun series between the Cleveland Indians and the Houston Astros. This team has been on a tear. We've seen the offense put up some big numbers. They looked really relaxed knowing they don't have to do too much and that goes for everyone including Jose Altuve who's had a couple of stretches this year where he didn't feel like he was swinging the bat the way he wanted to. Well that's not the case for this past 
last week. He's our steel power player of today's game. We look back at that last road trip. New York and Miami. Now, Jose Altuve came in to the Miami series with a batting average as low as 286. Kind of unheard for for him, but then it exploded to 311 after a couple of great games that he had. He actually hit one off the home run structure in Miami. It was a bomb. And then had a really big game in that final game of the series. Went four for five. Found the holes. He had two doubles, two triples. He became the first Astro to have four or more extra base hits in a game. Pretty impressive stuff. And when things are right, he's staying in the zone, not chasing. And that's what we're seeing right now. He also loves visiting ballparks. We know that. Leads the majors in batting average on the road. But he's going to look to keep it going right here at Minute Maid Park. They've got a long homestand with several tough opponents starting with the Cleveland Indians tonight. Altuve is going to face Trevor Bauer. Charlie Morton going for the Astros. Don't go anywhere. First pitch is coming up. Correa at third, Beltran at second, Gurriel at first. Two nothing Astros. First pitch to Bregman, and that's hit high in the air and deep to left field. It sends back Gardner looking up. See you later. A grand slam for Alex Bregman. And Springer hits it deep, straight away center field, and one batter in. The Astros have a one to nothing lead. But McCann might change this. Deep to right field. That ball's gone. That ball is driven deep to right center field. Looking up is Judge. Gone. Two run home run. Carlos Correa. That ball is ripped to left field. Ozuna back. Looking up. Gone. Grand slam. Yuli Gurriel. There's a ball hit. Deep to left center field, way back, all the way towards the wall, gone. On the ground, base hit to left. Marisnik charges, Elsberry being waved home. The throw by Jake is in time, Astros win. Astros win on a throw out at home, played by Jake Marisnik, getting Elsberry trying to score. The sights and sounds of a 6-1 road trip, and now we welcome you inside Minute Maid Park for a weekend series against the defending American League champion, Cleveland Indians. Here's the lineup for Terry Francona. 
on this first game. Jason Kipnis leading things off. Francisco Lindor in short. Michael Brantley in right field. Carlos Santana at first. Edwin Encarnacion. Jose Ramirez. Lonnie Chisenhall. The rookie Bradley Zimmer in his third big league game. And Roberto Perez. On the mound for the Astros, you're going to see Charlie Morton making his ninth start of the season. His FIP is very good. The BABIP, when they do put it in play, has a tendency to sneak through there, but he's been very good at getting the ground ball. Almost 53% of the time, you're going to see Charlie Morton either punch a guy out or get that ground ball. And we are underway with game one of the longest homestand of the season in 2017. A 10 gamer. Cleveland in for three, Detroit in for four, Baltimore in for three. The Astros riding high with a 29 and 12 record, the best by a good margin in all of baseball. 0 1 pitch is fouled back, it's nothing in two. Morton coming off that outing Blummer in New York where he said his stuff was as good as he's ever remembered. He went through that lineup the first time through and was basically striking out everybody. It almost literally did. But it was impressive to watch and I think he touched 99 in that game and a lot of people talking about again the velocity from Charlie Morton. Is he able to maintain it? But I think the biggest question for me in looking at some of his numbers is the last couple of games he's walked four guys in each ball game. He is riding a four game winning streak but I'd like to see him work a little bit more in the zone and not focus so much on that punch out. Had a lot of offensive support in that second game of the doubleheader and there is the punch out to start the game against Jason Kipnis as Kipnis misses the breaking ball and we're underway with a strikeout by Charlie Morton. And the curveball has been the punch out pitch for Charlie Morton. That is now 29 punch outs via the curveball 28 times they've been swinging and missing at that breaking ball for the strikeout. 28 28 of the 29 curveballs that he's used for the strikeout. 28 of them have swung at and missed. Wow. He's getting a lot of swings and misses from lefties on that curveball, too, as Jason Kipnis just showed, which is a good thing for Morton because he's facing basically all lefties tonight. As there's a called strike by Francisco Lindor, nothing in one. Lindor leads the team with nine home runs, also leads the team in runs scored with 29. Coming in batting 277. Their two catchers are right hand hitters Roberto Perez and Jan Gomes and the only other right handed hitter Charlie Morton will face or any of the other righties in this series will face is Edwin Encarnacion at least tonight and Encarnacion in there more than likely for the whole series as that pitch is a breaking ball that hits Lindor on the foot one one pitch is a hit batter. Saw it the other day with Lance McCullers in his start. A couple of those breaking balls. They want to back foot that, but not quite that intentional with it. And not to be literal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, strikeout and a hit batter, and now is Michael Brantley the hitter. Brantley, the right fielder. And a pickoff attempt out at first base is Lindor, and he knew it. Morton picks off Francisco Lindor for out number two in the first. Nicely done. Right on top of the head, huh? Good location, but you caught him leaning, and that's what allows that tag to get on Lindor. That was perfectly placed on the pickoff throw by Charlie Morton. So now the bases are cleared with two outs. And he'll deal with Michael Brantley. Pitches down and in for a ball. One to know. Good look at it on our mattress firm, Supermo. You see the tag right above Lindor's head. And all Guriel has to do is catch it and apply. Lindor was bluffing, or at least starting to go towards second. Only stolen two bases on the season, and Charlie Morton took advantage of that little flinch and picked him off. Now it's one and one to count to Brantley. Indians coming off a homestand in which they lost two out of three to the Tampa Bay Rays, and prior to that, lost two out of three to the team that's leading the American League Central. Most people would be surprised if they haven't been following closely that the Minnesota Twins are in first place in Terry Francona's division. Which is inside for a ball. Two and one. 
Brantley missed almost all of last year just 11 games played. But he has been a. Nice addition once again to that lineup for. The Indians and. Provides a little extra thump in the middle of that lineup gives at three four five. Of Brantley Santana and Encarnacion and then you can go down to Ramirez they've got a lot of potential there. In the top two thirds of their order. Morton with the count of two and two. Balls hit hard towards right field. Long run for Reddick as Brantley will turn first and head to second. Reddick gets the ball back in quickly, but Brantley has a two out double. Brantley's a good hitter, smart hitter, too. Saw Charlie Morton trying to get into the kitchen of Michael Brantley. Tried it again right here on our MD Anderson strike zone. You see that pitch coming to the inside corner. Brantley Bing brings the hands in nicely and turns on it. Brantley is a very, very good hitter. And even with two strikes, he's hitting over 290 now. With two strikes, that's good for fourth in the major leagues. As he hit that 2 2 pitch against the wall and right. Now it's Carlos Santana at the plate. Santana high in the air to right. He just got under this one as Josh Reddick waits for it. High fly ball to shy of the track for the final out of the inning. So the Astros come to bat with Jose Altuve hitting number three behind George Springer and Josh Reddick. Scoreless. by Southwest Airlines George Springer at the top tied for the team lead with nine home runs followed by Josh Reddick Jose Altuve with a big game a couple of days ago in Miami Carlos Correa Carlos Beltran Brian McCann Yuli Gurriel Alex Bregman and Nora Chica Aoki on the mound for the Cleveland Indians you're looking at Trevor Bauer the mercurial Trevor Bauer has owned the Astros in his six starts he's had against them. He is six and zero. But you look at some of the peripherals, ground ball percentage is low. That means he gives up a lot of fly balls. His FIP is above major league average, because if you combine the walks and the home runs that he's given up, that's what leads to that high FIP number. Trevor Bauer facing the Houston Astros, which has never been a good thing in the past for the Astros, as George Springer takes a call strike, nothing and one. See what George has done on the year. Had that hitting streak snapped on the road trip. Added up to 13 games at one point. Count is one and one. George hit a couple of home runs on that trip, both coming in Charlie Morton's last start. Second game of that doubleheader at Yankee Stadium. 
Oh, it's Springer, Josh Reddick, Jose Altuve to get things going for the Astros in this game. Bauer ahead, one ball and two strikes. Trevor Bauer making his eighth start of the year, his 100th start of his career. And you can see what he's done against the Houston Astros. That has never happened in the history of Houston Astros baseball. A starter against the Astros has gone six starts and won all six. It did happen once when they were the Houston Colt 45s when Art Mahaffey a pitcher for Philadelphia won the first six starts he had against the Colt 45s but never in Astros history has this happened and now Bauer gets George Springer looking for a called strike and Bauer starts the game just like Charlie Morton with a strikeout. Did break. George has good strike zone discipline. That's probably why he didn't chase that pitch out of the zone, just off the edge. Trevor Bauer also loves his breaking ball. There it is. He starts Josh Reddick off with it for a called strike, nothing in one. He's been having some issues with lefties this season. We'll see how that plays out tonight. Which is away for a ball to one and one. We saw Tom Kohler get sent down after his start against the Houston Astros. Kohler had the highest opponent slugging percentage against with left hand hitters, but now that he's not in the major leagues anymore, that distinction belongs to Trevor Bauer. Lefties are slugging 620 against him this year. Pitch in the dirt is two and two. The good news when talking about Trevor Bauer starting 6 0 in his career, just like Art Mahaffey, is Mahaffey in his seventh start against the Houston Colt 45s lost that game. There we go. Lucky sevens. But no other pitcher has ever started out 6 0 in his first six starts against the Astros, and now Reddick goes down swinging. Bauer has two strikeouts to start the game. We were talking to A.J. Hinge before the game and about the approach with Trevor Bauer, and that's what he was worried about right here is guys chasing that fastball up. But you can see kind of pitching Josh Reddick backwards with breaking balls early and then elevating the fastball. And I think Josh Reddick may have said something that there's some talk coming out of the dugout. Jim Reynolds is not happy about it. And A.J. Hinch is out quickly out of the dugout. Well, he's defending his players right here for sure. We've seen Josh at times this year. He wears his emotions on his sleeve. Yes. Whether he makes an out that he doesn't like and he'll fire that helmet down, or whether he has a call at home plate that he doesn't like. So whatever was said on the way to the dugout after that strikeout did not go over well with the home plate umpire Jim Reynolds. Now he's happy with Jose Altuve, so that's a good sign. Who isn't happy with Jose Altuve around? <laughs> that's a great point. There's a ball towards the right side. Base hit past the diving Kipnis into right field. Another opposite field base hit for Jose Altuve, who has more than anybody else in the American League. Keep it going. Julia talked about how he's been swinging the bat well, especially on the road trip. Getting his home stand off to a pretty good start, taking that early fastball from Trevor Bauer and shooting it the other way. I tell you what. That's the kind of approach you want to see these Houston Astros take. Get the singles when they're given to you and take the mistakes out of the ballpark. Do you think that's the key to why they've hit better on the road than well, at home? You and I have been talking about it. We've been uh, talking to other people about it. You know, what are the issues here at Minute Maid Park? Because they do have a tendency to kind of swing themselves into a slump. And it, the easy answer might be the fact that this is an easy place to leave. It's so attractive to watch, watch the ball fly into the Crawford boxes. You take aim at the train if you want to. So these guys might open up a little bit and expand the zone and try and swing a little bit too hard instead of taking what's given to them like Jose Altuve just did. Astros are averaging over five runs per game on the season. But at home, 90 runs scored in 20 games. On the road, 121 runs scored in 21 games. So one more game played on the road and they scored 31 more runs away from home. That's a big game. <laughs> if they score 31 tonight, it's all even. <laughs> if it's just away, it's 2-0. And, oh. and Altuve is one of those guys. He's yeah. as big a culprit as anybody. He's at, he said, I have no idea why it hits so well on the road and not at home. He wishes it would be a little more 
level, but he's happy to have as that road average where it's been the last few years for sure. And Correa ahead of the count 3 and 0. Oh. Last time the Indians saw this guy, Carlos Correa, he was just starting to get into it. Terry Francona said before the game he could see the at bats improving in that series in Cleveland. He left that series with just five runs batted in. Here we are three weeks later, he has 23 runs batted in. Takes that 3 0 pitch for a strike, it's 3 and 1. And we've seen Correa use the whole field during this stretch where he's really been hot. He's really made an effort to stay up the middle the other way, and I think that's why you're starting to see some of these infields play him straight up. Yeah, if anything, especially in center field with the rookie playing his third big league game, Bradley Zimmer, you know he's following the scouting reports. He's actually shaded slightly to the right field side of center with Correa up there. One pitch away, ball four. And the Astros have a little two out rally going. Altuve on second, Gray on first. Well, here's Carlos Beltran. Beltran has all three of his home runs as a left hand hitter this year. Which hitter takes a call strike nothing in one. Carlos a little bit better batting average right handed but most of his power has been as a lefty. Ball is ripped foul past Rich Tower in the first base coaching box area and it's nothing in two. Hey, the Fedoras are out tonight. Fedora Friday. Fedora Friday. <laughs> Big day, guys. Presented by Goya. 10,000 fans received that good looking fedora. Looks good on you. <laughs> you get a free bowl of soup with that? <laughs> it is a good looking fedora. I like it. I heard you sported one in that Atlanta series, and that's why we have a big crowd tonight. You must have really made them look good. I do. Look at look at how many people are here. You look at them. <laughs> we got to look at all these people with the Goya fedoras. Might have a little bit to do with guys on the field too. Yeah, that's not not too bad. When good hats, good players. 29 and 17. Yeah. And really, they haven't been home much. <laughs> that's an even better point. Yeah. Two game home stands didn't do it for you. Beltron stays alive. One and two. Based on tonight and what we've heard through the weekend, we could see really good crowds for this Indians Astro series. And it is the American League defending champion against the team with the best record in baseball. Well, I tell you what, if you go back to the Cleveland series in Cleveland between the Astros and Indians, that was a fun series to watch. So why not show up and watch it here in person? Astros lost two out of three. Houston won their lone game by two runs, and Cleveland won a couple of one run games. As Beltron takes down and in for a ball, it's two and two. That felt like the Indians squeeze everything possible out of their bullpen to take two out of three in that series. That was really the only thing that saved their series. That bullpen was completely shut down. And has continued to be shut down for them the rest of the year. They have an ERA as a bullpen just above one. Line drive, base hit past Lindor in the center field. Coming around is Altuve, ball is bobbled. Jose scores 1-0 Astros on a Carlos Beltran RBI. Two out lightning again. The Astros are not afraid to create rallies with two strikes. And those risk numbers, runners were in scoring position less than or two outs. These guys go ahead and rake. Impressive the way they're able to go out there and have quality ABs in some tight situations, not giving away at bats throughout the course of the game. They are the best in baseball in that category that you talked about, runners in scoring position with two outs. Yeah, they are coming into today's game 331. 
331 with two outs and runners in scoring position. So often in Beltron's case, it was one and two. So often, so many of those situations, a pitcher is within a strike of going back into his own dugout. And next thing you know, it's a run, two runs, three runs. The Astros able to keep innings alive as here's Brian McCann taking a pitch outside for a ball. And that is a devastating thing to an opposing pitcher when you can continue to put runs on the board when you're an out away or a strike away from getting out of the inning. Those are daggers. Back breakers. See if Brian McCann can add to that. They want to do it against this guy, that's for sure. And this guy being a, a guy who has a lot of success against this team, no doubt, when a guy has pitched well against a particular team like Trevor Bauer, you hope to jump him if possible as early as possible. If he beats the Astros tonight, he would be the first pitcher to defeat an opponent seven straight times to begin a career since Chen Min Wong did it against the Seattle Mariners back in 05 to 08. Brian McCann gave me a birthday present last time these Astros faced Trevor Bauer going deep. He's got his number a couple of times. Oh, Trevor man. Bauer couldn't believe he gave up another home run. <laughs> that was the last at bat that Bauer faced McCann, and now the count's two and one. And the two catchers for the Astros have a couple of home runs against Bauer. Out back. Two and two to count to McCann. And the breaking ball gets McCann swinging for the final out. But two outs and nobody on, and the Astros score a run. Carlos Beltran giving them a 1 0 lead at the end of one inning. With Charlie Mart Morton on the mound, we're looking at those strikeouts. 28 of the 29 strikeouts he's got have been swinging at the breaking ball. That has been a great pitch for him, but he's also done a very good job of getting ahead with the fastball. We talked about the velocity, 95 plus miles an hour, but when that fastball has been spotted, he has gone straight to that breaking ball and proven it to be an out pitch for him. It's good to see Charlie Morton creating some swing and miss type stuff. You could see on that series of highlights just how devastating a pitch it is. Well, it's got different breaks to it, too. We've kind of seen the slurve that comes across the zone, and we've also seen that traditional 12 6 hammer. And it's equally effective, if not more effective, against lefties, at least this year, than righties. He's had a lot of success against lefties. No, you're exactly right. That average under 200 against Charlie Morton. You look at Charlie Morton, he's averaging 16 and a half pitches per inning. 
and he's gone six innings a couple of times and seven another time. You just look at his pure stuff, and you feel like it's just a matter of time before he marries that up with deep outings because his stuff can play for a while. Yeah, that's uh, that's the issue. How do you get him into those six and seven innings? This is upstairs to Encarnacion, two and two. He has gotten into the seventh inning. 428 against Oakland. He went seven strong, gave up four earned runs. But those last couple of outings for A.J. Hinch and the Astros, watching him watch, watching him walk eight guys in the last two games, it's got to be tough. Just missed inside to Encarnacion. It's three and two. He's had double digit strikeouts in two of his last four outings, including a career high 12 in that game against Oakland that Blumer mentioned, where he went seven innings. Two two pitches sent deep to right field. Reddick all the way back to the corner, and this ball is foul. Josh Reddick gave it a good effort, and Encarnacion didn't miss a home run by much. Charlie Morton working on his normal rest had to start on Sunday night. Not entirely sure that Encarnacion was trying to go that way. It looked like he was just trying to catch up to Charlie Morton's velocity. Almost snuck one in there. Fastball swing and a miss, 96 miles an hour. As Edwin Encarnacion goes down, second strikeout for Morton. Of course, we talk about the breaking ball being such a good pitch for him, and maybe he does save it for left-handed hitters, but that is just straight noise right by Edwin Encarnacion. And we've talked about this at a previous start, too, but it's almost as if it doesn't do you any good to look at a Charlie Morton video from before <laughs> last year. Yeah, if you're doing any scouting off previous video, you're probably not going to see the same guy. Because this guy is blowing hitters away now at 95, 96. He's averaging almost 96 miles an hour with his fastball. And it's almost as if he's trying to learn to be this new version of Charlie Morton with the velocity. Because normally in the past, he's relied so much on that heavy sinker. Guys, oh, go, go ahead. ahead, Julia. I was just going to add Terry Francona was asked about Morton today because they had faced him, but it's been a couple of years. And he said, we don't know this Charlie Morton that from what we've seen so far, he's throwing the, belt, the ball so well and so confident on the mound. This is a completely different guy than the last one that we saw. This ball is rocketed into center field on the move. Springer diving attempt. He makes the play. George Springer robs Jose Ramirez. I almost stood up with the rest of the fans here at Minute Maid Park. That ball was crushed off the bat of Jose Ramirez. George Springer shading him towards that left center field gap. Talked about the steps he gets. Watch him in center. Recognition, first step is key. Gets a quick start and obviously has no regard for his body laying out. He's, what? Pretty, he's pretty good. Once George gets within diving distance, he usually <laughs> makes the play. And we saw Jake Marisnik make some fine plays in Miami. And you know how George and Jake are together. I'm sure George wanted to make another catch just to show Jake he still has it too. Still got it. Two outs. Base is cleared. You saw Charlie Morton's reaction. Nothing better for a pitcher than give up a bullet to center field that looks like extra bases and all of a sudden end up with a second out of the inning. One and one to count to Lonnie Chisenhall. Well, there you go. Julia reaffirmed what we were talking about. If you're an opposing manager or an opposing hitter, you really can't go to school on the Charlie Morton <laughs> video from before last year. And he only made four starts last year. He still has that sinker that can still get in on hitters, but it, with that high octane fastball now, it's been fun to watch. Probably going to get himself reacquainted with the four seam fastball. He should start to figure out a reason why he's throwing so hard because he keeps getting asked about it and he has no answer. Yeah, he's got to come up with something good. Some, yeah. yeah. Some reason. Ball off the bat of Jose Ramirez left his bat at 102.8 miles an hour. 3 1 pitch. That's pretty hard hit on one hop, Carlos Correa. So some line drives off the bat of Cleveland, the Cleveland hitters, but. Not, no damage.
one to look forward to Miller time later in today's game brought to you by Miller Lite. Yuli was having a good time back there in Cleveland. Four for six. He had a bomb in that game also, or in that series also. Off of Trevor Bauer. Good guy to have in the lineup. During the four for six against Bauer, he had four consecutive base hits before Bauer finally retired him his last time. As Yuli takes a pitch inside for a ball, 1-0. Curiel coming off that road trip in which the Astros went six and one and returned to his new home in Miami Florida hit a grand slam in that first game of a three game sweep against the Marlins. See on the year Yuli batting 280 or a broken bat flare speared by Jason Kipnis for the first out of the second inning. So one out. Sometimes you need a little defense behind you, and sometimes you need some defensive positioning behind you. And for Charlie Morton, he had both last inning. He had a ball hit 103 miles an hour and 105 miles an hour. Ended up being the second and third outs. Here's Alex Bregman. See the four RBIs on the road trip. That came in one swing. Backed up Charlie Morton. Who had a six spot before he took the mound in Yankee Stadium. This ball's to right field and down for a base hit. Heading to extra bases is Bregman. Chisenhall gets the ball back in. Alex has a one out double. I think that might be the Alex Bregman we should get used to seeing as a guy that can go gap to gap, line to line. He's got doubles pop, not worrying so much about the home run, just putting together some great ABs. And that is a great look at Alex Bregman keeping his head down on contact on that fastball away. That was good to see. Bregman's second double in six career bats against Bauer, and now Norioki's the hitter. Oki, the left fielder, coming in with a batting average of 276. With the combination of no designated hitter in Miami, meaning Carlos Beltran had to get a start one game. Plus the red hot Jake Marisnik, who had two home runs. Nori didn't play in either of those last games. Didn't start, I should say, in either of those last two games in Miami. So he's gone three days without a start. Nothing had won the count to Nori. In the air center field. Zimmer doesn't have to move far, and he puts it away for out number two. Back to the top of the order in George Springer. Astros coming into this game not only with the best record in baseball, but they've also taken over the best run differential category. They're now plus 61 in the major leagues. Next closest, the Dodgers are one run behind at a plus 60 run differential. Springer struck out looking his first time up. On the ground, bow off the breaking ball, nothing in one. This is game number 21 at home. Astros have already played 21 road games. A win tonight will give them the exact same record both home and road. 15 and 6 on the road currently. 14 and 6 at home. But AJ very happy to have a long stretch here. And it'll be a really good homestand with some teams that are amongst the best in the American League. A one pitch misses, it's one and one. I know it's only 21 games on the road, but 15 and 6 is a little incredible to think about. 15 games on the road you've already got under your belt as far as wins. And that's with your number two pitcher getting roughed up on the road up until his last three starts. We mentioned the run scoring differential too, 121 runs on the road. That's almost six per game. <laughs> That's one way to accrue some wins. Lummer mentioned the average with runners in scoring position and two outs. George Springer 
right there near the top of the charts in that category. And now it's three and one. Good hitters count for Springer. Again, the elevated fastball from Trevor Bauer, but a good job by George laying off it. Trevor trying to play on the aggressiveness of the Astros and fastball counts. Springer first in the American League in that category with that seven for 11 mark. Has a chance to add to that here. Balls hit hard, but at Lindor. Indian shortstop makes the play, and that'll do it for the Astros in the bottom half of the second inning. It's 1 0 Houston. Presented by Southwest. Yes to low bears with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Pino in the park. Presented by Houston Methodist was a huge success today. Tons of fans enjoying a little pregame festivities. Looks like a good time. Yeah, a lot of fans were out there. Looks like they all came in here. Yeah, it is, it's a it's a big crowd. It is a big and bright Friday night crowd, and the Stro Zone is in full effect as well. We have a different theme shirt every night for the Stro Zone as we look at more Pinot in the park, great food items throughout. So they had. Starting at 5 o'clock, a little wine tastings and pairings. A lot to learn about out there. Getting ready for a Friday night baseball game. Here's Bradley Zimmer. Center fielder playing in his third major league game. What have you heard about this kid? I have a cousin who is in the Cleveland Indians organization and uh, came up with this kid. My cousin's still in double A. But uh, he said good things about Zimmer. He said that him and Clint Frazier were a big part of that. Uh, 2014 draft and Clint Frazier obviously got traded for Andrew Miller so it worked out but they were high on this kid. He's built like a deer can run had 33 stolen bases last year in double A. Has a little bit of pop he also had 14 home runs but they really like the tools this kid brings to the table. Obviously enough to keep him here. Yeah, getting a chance at the big league level Brandon Geyer's on the disabled list. In yesterday's game, actually on Wednesday's game, the day off yesterday, he had a home run in the ninth inning. His first big league home run came against the Tampa Bay Rays closer Alex Colome. It's something you don't hear too often as a number one pick out of the University of San Francisco, which is kind of interesting. It is. It's an interesting midweek ballpark to play at when you're going to the University of California. We would go through there and play those guys all the time across the bay. On the ground, Yuli Guriel on two hops will take it himself. Yuli usually likes to flip, and for whatever reason that time Charlie Morton wasn't there, so Yuli didn't have the option. And you can see a little bit of the speed of Brad Zimmer. He 
was a look at Yuli getting in front of that. Recognized Charlie Morton wasn't there. Had to hot step it over there to first base to beat Bradley Zimmer. So one out base is cleared. So the follow up obviously is what was unique. Where, where was this stadium? University oh, it, well, San Francisco, you know, is just packed with houses mm -hmm. and, and, and large buildings. So in between, I mean, in the center of the city is this. It looks like a courtyard of the university and there's fences that are about 50, 60 feet tall wrapped around this thing. And all of a sudden there would be a D1 baseball game going on in the middle of it. So just made it interesting atmosphere, something you didn't anticipate. You get weird jet streams running through there. <laughs> Not exactly an immaculate infield, but a fun place to play. And Bradley Zimmer out of a University of San Francisco. The Dons. Yeah. A one count to Roberto Perez. Swing and a miss, nothing and two. Yeah, Brian, Brandon Geyer and Abraham Almonte on the DL, so Zimmer getting a chance to play. Grounded out to first, and now Roberto Perez with an 0-2 count. Charlie Morton has two strikeouts, one each inning. And Morton working on his normal rest as he pitched on Sunday. A.J. Hinch had the choice because he had two pitchers go on Sunday. Perez tried to hold up, but he went around. Strikeout number three. Three pitch strikeout for Morton, two away in the third. Some high velo coming at you. Tough to recognize and hold up. Perez knew it. 98 on that last fastball. Yeah, I was trying to see if that was for real too. That's um, uh, it's reaching back and getting a little something extra. Charlie's been able to do that now in his last two starts. Had never thrown a pitch 99 in his career until his last start Sunday against the Yankees. Now he starts out Jason Kipnis with a strike, nothing in one. And for me, if you watch Charlie Morton's throwing motion and delivery, it doesn't look like he's trying to throw 98 99 miles an hour it just looks like the ball's jumping out of his hand and that ball delivered into left field Oreo he cuts it off Jason Kipnis who has been hitting better lately with a two out single and the Kipnis got down the count nothing in one on a free and easy 97 mile an hour fastball <laughs> and he had a little change up kind of left up in the zone and gave up a base hit. So here's Francisco Lindor hit by a pitch on a breaking ball his first time up. Lindor catching up before the game with Carlos Beltran around the batting cage and his buddy Carlos Correa during their little running drills before the game. Part of Team Puerto Rico as he sends one off the glove of Altuve into shallow right. Altuve trying to make the play at third. Instead, safely into third goes Jason Kipnis. That ball was hit hard. But it will go as an error against Altuve. Watch the hands of Jose Altuve. This ball's hitting well. But for me, Jose Altuve, we always talk about fielding the baseball out in front of you, seeing the hop into your glove. Watch how deep his glove is, basically underneath that left knee. Let the ball travel a little too much instead of getting the hands out there and catching that ball in front of him. Because once you lose sight of where that ball is going, it's tough to match up where that ball is going to be with your hands. And then after he couldn't feel the ground ball cleanly, had he picked that ball up, he may have had a shot at Kipnis, who was going first to third. Instead, couldn't quite get the grasp on that, and Kipnis is a third now. So an error on Altuve, and now strike one to Michael Brantley. Brantley with a double his first time up. It's like the Astros put a little two out magic together in the first inning. The Indians try to do the same here with a two out rally. Pitch in the dirt. Smothered by Brian McCann, one and one. Gaddis started three of the last five games on that road trip. A lot of that was due to scheduling. But Brian McCann gets the start to open up this homestand. And by scheduling, I mean the Astros' schedule. 
So they played a doubleheader Sunday night in New York. Brian McCann had the last game and then flew in and arrived around 5 in the morning. So McCann got the next game. McCann caught Tuesday and then Wednesday, day game after a night game, back to Evan Gaddis. Yeah, not just your everyday day game either. Usually a 1 o'clock start that game in Miami at noon. It's a lot to ask of a catcher to go night day. One two pitch on the ground to Altuve. He gets a chance to make up for it, and he does to retire Michael Brantley. So Morton works out of a little situation. We're through two and a half. Bottom of the third in our Shiner Light Blonde Spotlight falls on Josh Reddick. Let's check out his what he's done in April and in May. The OPS has gone up. The walk rate's gone up for Josh Reddick. The strikeout rate's gone down. Things have been good. He's also been using the whole field. And his hitting coaches love his competitive at bats. That's who he is. And he is looking and feeling pretty comfortable up there because you're seeing that. You're also seeing the frustration when he gets out. We saw that in his first at bat today. But since moving up in that two hole, guys, a lot of things have gone right for the entire team, really. It's a nice fit. He's, he's hitting between Springer and Altuve, so maybe getting some more pitches to hit that way, but also helping out Altuve with some of these great at bats he's seen or when he's seen a lot of pitches and just working the pitchers in that way. And even the Cleveland pitcher said coming in that the, you know, the lineup's so deep. Well, it starts right here at the top. It is very deep, Julia. And Josh Reddick, as good as his numbers have been in May, could have. Had even better numbers. He didn't some tough luck at Miami. Yeah, I was talking to him earlier and uh, I said the same thing. He goes, if we'd have just been playing that series at Miami here at home, he goes, oh, we would have had at least two or three hits. <laughs> Salvaged those days, but he was hitting the ball hard all over the ballpark. And he crushes one to right. 0 oh, 2 pitch is a home run. Josh Reddick makes it 2 0 on home run number six of the season. Welcome back, Josh. He loves it here in Houston. That's what the shirts are out there for the Stroh Zone tonight. They have the Wooston shirts. <laughs> you can hear him whooping it up for him. Nicely done. That was courtesy of Josh Reddick himself in a tweet <laughs> before the last mini homestand where he said heading back to Wooston. Yep. Right on cue with Julia talking about how Reddick likes it in that spot. He's down 0 and 2 and gets a pitch that he can hit over the wall. He also might be a marketing major. <laughs> Here's Jose Altuve. He singled right field his first time up and takes a pitch from Bauer away. It's one and one. Well, the home run has bitten Trevor Bauer this year, not just Josh Reddick, but overall. He's averaging. Almost twice as many home runs per nine innings as he did last year. He was at a little under one home run per nine last year, and this year he's at 1.85. Breaking ball gets him ahead of Altuve, one and two. Altuve singled and scored his first time up. 
want that pitch up they get it up and now two they can't catch up. That's strikeout number four. Back to that Reddick home run. A little bit of a slider it looked like maybe a cut at 80 to 88 miles an hour but a good job of Josh you can see him bringing the hands closer to the sternum almost it looked like bringing those hands in in order to get the barrel to the baseball once he got to contact drove through that baseball nicely 102.7 off the barrel 25 degree launch angle estimated 388 not sure what they were trying to accomplish there but <laughs> it looked like a cutter or maybe yeah. something that was just diving in right into that zone at 0 2. That's not where you want that pitch. No, gosh, no. Carlos Correa takes one outside. He's got a 2 0 count. Correa walked his first time up. Bauer has not really challenged him thus far. Walked on five pitches his first time up. Here's a strike on the breaking ball, 2 and 1. Astros leading two to nothing against a pitcher they have never defeated before. Trevor Bauer, six starts, six and zero, oh. and another good breaking ball. Correa just nods in agreement with Jim Reynolds, two and two. Buckled him up. To the knees, jelly right there on Carlos Correa. That two-one count with a back-to-back -back breaking balls. Now fastball misses. Bauer thought he had a strikeout. Three and two. Feeling pretty good about himself after that pitch. Now he has to come back and regroup. Correa with a couple of days off had the game Wednesday off in Miami and then the natural off day yesterday. And he swings and misses at that fastball. So back to back strikeouts getting out Tuve and Correa five in the game for Trevor Bauer. Talked about it earlier with the elevated fastballs back to back punch outs on the elevated fastball. Carlos Beltran. Beltran gave the Astros a 1 0 lead with a two out RBI single. And you even mentioned that right out of the gates. The reason why Bowers had so much success is the Astros have not done a good job laying off that pitch upstairs from Bauer. Well, they chase it early in counts and it gets him behind in the count. Then he goes to the breaking ball for the punch outs. But here it's a little bit more backwards. You saw in hitters' counts, Bauer went breaking ball, breaking ball to get back in the count. And then proceeded to put Carlos Correa away with fastballs. One and one to count on Beltron. Here's the breaking ball again. It's one and two. Last fastball from Bauer came in there at 96. He's normally at 93, 94 mile an hour guy. Nice gesture by Brian McCann, finding a young fan. Trevor Bauer was ready to throw, and Carlos Beltron had called time. Four? <laughs> It's a better move. <laughs> you ain't lying. I was thinking the same exact thing. Break up that rhythm. Anything you can do to fluster the guy on the mound. Not that it takes much. I'm just kidding. Breaking ball misses two and two. Bauer has a lot of unique characteristics on the mound in his pregame warmup, even his warm up every inning before he starts an inning. 2 2 pitches fouled away. He'll take a running start and throw that first pitch as hard as he can to start his warm up routine every inning. I got to see that firsthand for the first time in the big leagues, and that was very interesting. I was with the Arizona Diamondbacks when Trevor Bauer came up and made his initial start in the big leagues out in Atlanta. Fastball for a called third strike, so Bauer strikes out three. We'll talk a little more about Trevor Bauer in the fourth, but. Josh Reddick. Big home run. Bring those hands in and turn on it. Young man likes hitting here at Minute Maid Park.
nothing as we head to the fourth inning. Charlie Morton has a couple of runs to work with. Had a lot of runs to work with in his last start as the Astros scored six in the first, two in the second against the Yankees in his last start and route to a 10 7 win. Morton will face Carlos Santana to lead off the fourth inning. Santana, Edwin Encarnacion, and Jose Ramirez. Santana flied out to right his first time up. Pitches inside for a ball. It's 2 0. Looks like it caught a lot of the plate. I think Trevor Bauer thought he had a couple of strikes last inning that were called balls from Jim Reynolds. Only other time Morton faced the Cleveland Indians was as a Pittsburgh Pirate July 3rd 2015. Ended up throwing six innings allowed three runs in that game including a home run. Four pitch walk to Carlos Santana to start the fourth. Let's take a look now at our forward spray chart Edwin Encarnacion big offseason acquisition for the Cleveland Indians power hitter. See that he has got some holes in that that strike zone right now. He's pulling a lot of ground balls. You're going to see the Astros shift against him, even with the runner at first base, but not doing a good job on the inside corner, down and in. It's been a good place to beat him, but it's kind of interesting to see that cold spot right down the middle, kind of pulling off some pitches, maybe guessing in too often, maybe guessing way too often, but not covering the plate. It has been a struggle in the transition from the Toronto Blue Jays to the Cleveland Indians for Encarnacion. Now batting 201 with his strikeout his first time up. Coming off a 2 for 23 home state. Always a scary hitter though. You never know when that's going to get turned around. Still does have six home runs with 14 runs batted in. Here's a strike one and one. Yeah, there's no way that the Astros are pitching to the current Edwin Encarnacion. They're pitching to the guy they saw in Toronto. When you develop a reputation, guys are going to keep attacking it until you make the adjustment. One and two the count. Last five years in Toronto, beginning in 2012, he had 42, 36, 34, 39, and 42 home runs. That's pretty consistent. Yeah. That'll get you a nice contract. Signed through 2019. And the inside him right after the new year. Morton ahead, one ball and two strikes. Which is away for a ball, two and two. It just at first glance looks a little jumpy. Maybe pulling off some of the pitches middle away. Foul tip gets him on the foot two and two. It's a two seamer. Good arm side run from Charlie Morton on that. Charlie Morton's one of those guys. Again, you heard Julia talk about Terry Francona saying we we don't know this guy. We don't know this guy with this kind of velocity. He's one of those guys that you go back and you talk to your teammates. You're like, man, <laughs> this stuff is pretty electric. You hear guys say it got on me quick. It means you really didn't have time to load up and get that swing going. So you try and shorten the swing a little bit and be quicker to the baseball. In the air foul. 97 on that last pitch. Four pitch walk to start the inning, and now Edwin Encarnacion with a 2 2 count. Astros kicking off this weekend series against the Indians. And kicking off the longest homestand of the season, a 10 gamer. Off day yesterday to get ready for this long homestand. 2 2 is ripped towards the Crawford boxes at left, and this ball leaves in a hurry. Two run home run, Edwin Encarnacion. 
his seventh home run of the season. And just like that, the game's tied at two. There's a breaking ball, middle in. And we saw in his first AB, he got blown away by a couple of fastballs from Charlie Morton. This is not where you want this breaking ball. You see McCann set up on that outside corner. Ends up staying in the middle of the part of the plate. When you got a guy thinking fastball who isn't able to catch up to the fastball, that's what he can do to a breaking ball. Two strikes, you want to get that off the edge. Good look at that home run coming right into your living room. Baseball ended up back on the field after that nice catch by a fan. It's nothing in one to Jose Ramirez. Ramirez hit the ball hard his first time up, lining out to center field on a great catch by George Springer. Pitch away, it's one and one. That ball left the ballpark in a hurry off the bat of Encarnacion. Pitch down low for a ball, two and one. Broke in bat, Reddick comes on, he won't be able to get there. Or Ramirez with a broken bat base hit, walk home run and single to start the fourth inning for the Cleveland Indians. Some will say that that makes up for the line out to center field and the great play by George Springer, but may even out for some guys, but I don't believe in that. But today, for right now, it has evened out for Jose Ramirez. Well, Lonnie Chisinau hit the ball hard his last time up. With the shift on, he hit it right to Carlos Correa for the final out of the inning. For you, it seemed like there were a lot more line drive outs than blue pits. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm sure that. I don't know how true that is, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that theory. I would say you're the majority of players <laughs> who feel that way. The pitchers are gonna be on the exact opposite end of that spectrum. Exactly. They feel they give up more broken bat hits than anybody else in the league. <laughs> We're infield in a little flare. <laughs> Infield is in on the left side, and there's only one infielder on that side. That's Alex Bregman. Everybody else shifted around on the right side against Lonnie Chisholm Hall. Which of this Indians lineup will show you a lot of lefty hitters, including the switch hitter, seven of nine hit from the left side. Up high for a ball, it's one and one. Charlie Morton came into this inning with a good pitch count 44 pitches through three. That is elevated so far to 15 pitches this inning without recording an out. Center field pretty well hit again. Chisenhall has hit the ball hard twice and he's 0 for 2 as he lines out to George Springer for the first out. Kick off your summer at the 10th annual Astros Bayou Bash. The bash takes place before tomorrow's game from noon to 3 on Crawford Street. And to enjoy tons of food, games, and a live performance by local country artists. Visit astros.com slash bayou. Or call 1 877 9 Astros. Here's Bradley Zimmer. He grounded out to Yuli Gurriel his first time up. Zimmer now two for eight in his young major league career. Swings through the breaking ball, nothing in one. You've got to think that is always one of the biggest adjustments going from Triple A to the major leagues or Double A to the major leagues within a year. His case is breaking balls are good at the minor league level, but not quite this good. 
Yeah it's all the secondary pitches that you're not accustomed to seeing in the zone. That last pitch right there he gave up on he probably doesn't see that much break in the minor leagues. It's nothing and two. So you're spending time between Akron and Columbus. Oh and two the count on the young 24 year old outfielder for the Cleveland Indians takes a pitch up and in one and two. Tried to hold up. He went around. Bradley Zimmer goes down swinging. Four strikeout for Morton. He has one each inning and two away in the four. Good breaking ball from Charlie Morton again. That was a little more of the sweeper. That's that back foot action that you're looking for to get that check swing. Looks good coming in, but questionable by the time you start that swing. So after a walk, a home run, and a single, Morton retires the next two and now has the number nine hitter, Roberto Perez. Perez down on the count, nothing in one. Good breaking ball throws Perez 0 and 2. Mentioned. Probably going in lockdown mode on this breaking ball. Good location down. Still catching a little bit of the heart of the plate, but good action down. Started that one at Perez, had big break to it. 0 2 pitches away, it's 1 and 2. Mentioned Trevor Bauer making his 100th career start. Tonight is. Career start number 170 for Charlie Morton. Ninth as a Houston Astro. Also is ninth as an American leaguer. Atlanta, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia prior to a stop in Houston. One two misses away, two and two. The count goes full, which means Jose Ramirez with two outs will get a head start off first. I'll be curious to see what Charlie Morton does right here. He's had a tough time locating the fastball this inning for some reason. The breaking ball has been good, but a good job by Perez laying off that last one. He got him. Perez goes down swinging back to back strikeouts to end the fourth, but Cleveland ties it up on an Edwin Encarnacion two run home run. It's 2 2.
sign into Twitter and check out our Chevy Stroh poll. Remember to follow us at Root Sports SW. We asked you tonight, how are you feeling about the Astros 29 and 12 start? Are you all in World Series or bust? Cautiously optimistic or it's early. I'm going to wait and see. This is game 42 tonight. What do you got, fans? We'll tell you who wins later in the broadcast, guys. It's like a secret psychology test. It is. <laughs> There's a little psychology involved in tonight's yeah. stroll poll. Exciting to talk about though. The reality is as Brian McCann leads off the bottom of the fourth. The reality is there's 120 games to go after today. Yes. But there's also the reality that the Astros are 17 games over 500 after 41 games. And teams that have had similar records after similar uh, similar points in the season have gone on to do great things. The last time the Astros started the season 17 games over this quickly was never. The quickest they've ever been 17 over was the 1980 team. That was 40 and 23 to get to 17 over. So 63 games in, this team beat that pace by 21 games. <laughs> Put that into perspective, all. And then the next threshold, if the Astros win tonight, you have to go back to the 1998 team. 2 2 count to Brian McCann. He hits one into the shift from shallow right field. Jason Kipnis makes the play. Guess what, Todd? It's time for our unlimited baseball break presented by T Mobile. And this is exactly what you were talking about. 2017 through 41 games. That record at 29 and 12. Next best is that 1980 team that did it in 63 games with that 40 and 23 record. So that puts everything into perspective. That 80 team would lose the 64th game and not get back over 500 until deeper than the 98 team as Yuli Gurriel sends one to right field for an out. So the 98 team won that next game to get to 18 over. So that took them 74 games to get to 18 over. So if the Astros win today, they're then 32 games ahead of pace of the next closest <laughs> team. They've got a banner up here in Minute Maid Park. NL West champions in 80. NL Central champions in 98. It's good to be compared to division champions. Yes. In Astros history. Here's Alex Bregman. Takes a call strike. Nothing in one. Bregman doubled right field his first time up. Fastball upstairs, one and one. Trevor Bauer allowing a first inning run with a base hit by Carlos Beltran with two outs, and then a home run to Josh Reddick. Down in the count with two outs to Alex Bregman, two and one. Astros haven't had a one, two, three inning so far, but two outs and nobody on in the fourth. Here's a called strike two and two. Bauer had been losing the pitch count battle all the way through, but then a 28 pitch fourth inning put Charlie Morton at 72 through four. And now Bauer is through four at 67 pitches as he gets through that inning with just seven pitches and a one, two, three inning.
all tied at two here at Minute Maid Park. Join the Astros at Minute Maid Park this Saturday as they take on the Cleveland Indians. 10,000 fans in attendance will receive a Lance McCullers Jr. Gnome presented by Nolan Ryan Beef. Visit Astros.com or call 1-877-9-ASTROS for more info. Charlie Morton gets back to work here and he's done so well against left handed hitters this year and one of the things he did say that was working for him was the cutter and the curveball but he's starting to use that curveball more guys because of another starting pitcher he's been watching Lance McCullers and how effective that's been how successful he's been he's actually used it a little bit more because of that and it's been working for him guys. That's good to see he's really been good against lefties all year long and tonight he's been hurt. Mostly by a right hand hitter is Edwin Encarnacion's two run home run. The only runs he's allowed. Two runs on four hits so far through four innings. That curveball has been very effective on lefties too. Big whiff rate against them of over 52% on that curveball. 0 67 against the curveball for left hand hitters. And it seems like Righties would have trouble with the curveball, but they're hitting 318. Well, the common thinking is the reason switch hitters switch hit is to have the slider and the breaking ball come back to them. If you're just a right handed hitter, the breaking ball typically breaks away from you. There he goes on the breaking ball, getting him to swing and miss. But I'm I'm curious, and obviously I, I, I faced Charlie Morton years ago when he was just a sinker slider type guy, but the breaking ball, it looks like it has that big sweep to it. And what hitters are trying to do is trying to create an angle to put that in play and it's tough to do when it's coming across and down. This one's chop foul on the fastball. Stays two and two. So it's basically breaking across two planes which is tough to do as a hitter to try and because your brain is telling you how do I hit this ball in fair territory as hard as I can. And it's just a tough angle for these guys to pick up. Breaking ball down low. It's three and two. This will be an interesting inning or two for Charlie Morton as he works through the Indians lineup for a third time. He's usually had more success early in the game, first couple of times through the lineup. Fifth inning has been the issue for Charlie Morton. Ball's hit deep to right field. Reddick back, and the fifth inning continues to be an issue as Jason Kittness, a leadoff home run of the fifth. Gives the Indians a three to two lead. Three two fastball. You could see the pitch before when Charlie missed with the breaking ball. He was very upset with himself. But even throwing 95 plus miles an hour, if you tell a hitter that you're throwing a fastball and a fastball count, they have a tendency to get the head out and get to it. Looked like McCann was setting up inside. That one finishes middle middle. A good job of just dropping the head by Jason Kipnis. Getting to start his season late after a shoulder strain put him on the DL to begin the year and when we last saw him in Cleveland he was basically still getting his timing down just his first few games in the big league season but lately he's been hitting the ball hard as does Francisco Lindor all the way to the bullpen wall Lindor to second base Springer gets it back in quickly home run followed up by a double to start the fifth inning. You know, we talked about Charlie's inning by inning. Here's a good look at it. First inning through fifth, ERA on the left, opponent batting average on the right hand side. But you can see the ERA explodes in the fifth inning. That opponent batting average goes up. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that we see some of the walks gather in that fifth inning. He has a tough time locating. We just saw in that first AB with Jason Kipnis up there where he threw the breaking ball in the 2 2 count, forced him into a 3 2 count. And we see Charlie go to the fastball and guys start to take advantage of getting into fastball counts on the ground right side Brantley is retired but in the process moves Lindor to third with one out we've got a pitch usage it's going to be brought to you by AT&T and you can see the location on the left hand side innings one through four looks very good that thunderstorm down in the zone good fastballs on both sides of the plate to both left and right and then you see the location become a miss starts to miss locations all over the place see some of those fastballs elevated and up in the zone start to get hit around a little bit when, when you're unable to locate and you fall behind you're forced to throw those fastballs in the middle part of the zone that is really telling yeah and a real 
true explanation of why the fifth inning has been an issue. I know that's fifth inning and beyond, but once you lose that fastball command, it can spell trouble. And you saw the numbers in the fifth inning, and now the Astros bring the infield in, trying to prevent another run to score with Lindor on third base and one out. James Hoyt begins to throw in the Astros bullpen. First bullpen action of the night for either side. Astros led this game 2 0, the Indians scoring two in the fourth and one in the fifth. Both innings, the home run getting to Charlie Morton and Carnacion a two run home run. Kipnis a solo shot and the counts 2 0 on Carlos Santana. Got to be heads up if you're on the right side of the infield with a 2 0 count and this hitter at the plate with the infield in. Through the legs of McCann coming home Lindor the flip is out at home play. Morton tags Lindor who hesitated coming down the line and the Astros get a big out. That hesitation was everything. If he doesn't hesitate, he beats Charlie Morton to the plate. But because he hesitated, Charlie Morton was able to be there in time for that flip from Brian McCann. That's a tough read because usually that ball bounces off pretty quick. Tell you what, Lindor wore it too. Coming into home play, watch the contact with that left arm to the right knee of Charlie Morton. Full body block and the catch and tag. Nicely done. That was a lot going on for Morton to make that play and block the plate. He may have blocked the plate inadvertently because he kind of was sliding in to make the catch, but it was perfectly placed with that knee. <laughs> it was almost like he planned to block it. Yeah, that thing definitely took him in. So what a difference. It was 3-0 to Santana with a runner on third and one out. Now the infield could move back. And the count's three and two. And to what Todd is talking about, the Charlie Morton goes to the baseball. That was the only way he was going to catch that ball was by putting his body out there. It worked out nicely. Now he's one pitch away from getting out of this inning with only one run allowed. Line drive, base hit down the line in left field. Santana will head to second base. Third extra base hit of the inning. And again, that play at home plate looks big. And Santana's there with two outs. We have seen a few balls off the backstop this year that have gotten past the catcher that have bounded all the way close to home plate or in that case closer so Brian McCann can make the play. Jose Altuve was retired on a play earlier this year where the ball came all the way back. It is a tough read here at Minute Maid Park. It seems like the ball just ricochets in a hurry back towards home plate. Here's Encarnacion hit a two run home run his last time up. Broken bat Altuve in the shift on the third base side of the bag makes the play in time. So a run scores but it could have been worse. Charlie Morton covering home plate getting Francisco Lindor trying to score.
Sports is presented by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. And by Jack in the Box. Taste the jumbolicious jumbo meal before it's gone. Only at Jack in the Box. Astros come to bat trailing for the first time in this game. It's 3-2 Indians as we head to the bottom half of the fifth inning. It'll be Nori Aoki and then back to the top of the order. George Springer and Josh Reddick against Trevor Bauer in his fifth inning of work. Mr. Aoki misses upstairs 1-0. Nori is 0 for 1 fly to center his first time up. Bauer has pitched for the Cleveland Indians each of the last four seasons five in total including this year we talked started to talk at the end of the fourth inning about how he made his major league debut with Arizona which is called strike one and two so you're a veteran at that point playing in 2012 your final big league season oh yeah and yeah. so trusty old veteran yeah what are you thinking when you see all the craziness that is associated with a young kid making his debut like Trevor Bauer did well putting it in perspective I know that you know he, he has a routine and I respect the routine we all have them but we were in the dead of August in Atlanta where it's about 150 degrees with a 700 percent humidity and he is out there an hour and a half before the start throwing foul line to foul line uh, doing his power blade workout to get loose and this is his pre inning he does this every inning. And that's actually toned down from what I saw when he first came up. It was a full on running sprint across the top of the mound and then proceeded to unleash absolute fury at the catcher at about 110 miles an hour. <laughs> made his debut June 28th, as you mentioned, in Atlanta. Prior to that, did he have word that? Oh, yeah. No, something yeah, the reputation. Well, we have the same agent. I, I knew who he was going into the whole thing. And I actually met Trevor while he was working out here. Uh, before the draft while he was with, uh, with the UCLA Bruins. So I met him in the tunnel here at uh, Minute Maid Park. So I, but I have nothing prepares you when you see that because usually you see guys tone down a little bit and do all their work in between starts. And it looked like he was getting a full workout in before. He has toned it down and made the adjustment because trying to do that 35 times a year is going to be exhausting. And he was a little burned out in that first start of his career. But he's got, he had amazing stuff. You knew the arm was electric. He had high velocity. That breaking ball was very good. But when in college, that sounds great because you're throwing one game a week. But when you're expected to do it every five days on the highest level, that makes it real tough. You got to save some of those bullets. He is definitely a guy who, throughout his career, has marched to his own drummer. Now calls Spring, Texas, his home, which misses the George Springer 2-0. Ended up pitching over 200 innings last year for the Indians, 190 in the regular season, and then 13 and two thirds in the postseason. Had one postseason start cut short because just couldn't stop the bleeding on his hand. Literally, he tried super gluing that thing shut and it didn't work. Built his own drones and had a little accident with a drone, it cost him some innings in that start against Toronto in the ALCS. Al tip. That is two and two on George. Tried to hold up, but he goes around, and Springer's frustrated. Strikeout number eight for Trevor Bauer, two outs in the fifth. Got kind of a funky delivery too. He's another guy that really studies the mechanics of the pitching motion. He used to be a really big tilt and drive guy. Now he's got a quick leg kick, kind of short arms the baseball. Looks like it's tough to pick up, especially when he elevates that fastball to these Astro hitters, unable to lay off it. Well, he gave Josh Reddick a pitch to hit at 0-2, and Josh didn't miss it. It was a breaking ball inside and. Reddick sent it out for a home run. Good swing there by Josh. Fouled back to the screen. It's one and one. Josh was eight for 29 on that last road trip. Easily could have been 10 or 11 for 29. One for two tonight. All 
called strike one and two. Bauer seemingly has settled in since that home run allowed to Reddick. He has retired eight in a row and struck out five of those eight batters. The other three have hit fly ball. Now at one and two, they don't want to make the same mistake again with two strikes to Josh. A little meeting at the mound between the catcher Roberto Perez. Francisco Lindor will join the conversation. <laughs> he may be there, but he's not joining that conversation. <laughs> that is strictly between <laughs> Roberto Perez and the pitcher Trevor Bauer. <laughs> There's a little cut fastball from Trevor Bauer that Reddick hit out. What does he go with here? Breaking ball in the dirt. Reddick holds up. And it's two and two. Lummer mentioned Josh likes hitting here at Minute Maid Park. He's one of the few Astros who have a better average at home than on the road. Batting 345 at home. Overall, Reddick hitting 286. And Bauer gets him swinging. Nine in a row sent down by Trevor Bauer. And six of those via the strikeout. Kubota. Lance McCullers on the road has been very good in his last three starts. 2 0 is the record. But how about the 19 innings he has pitched? He's gotten 14 strikeouts, which may be a little bit low, but the biggest number in the middle there zero earned runs. He has done a great job making the adjustment, actually pitching to a little more contact and creating ground balls using that defense behind him. But when he has needed the strikeout, he can still go to it with that breaking ball. Charlie Morton starts the sixth inning off with a strike to Jose Ramirez, nothing in one. Ramirez tired on a great play by George Springer, is also singled, one for two, hit the ball hard the first time and not so much the second time, still ended up with a broken bat hit. You mentioned not as many strikeouts for Lance, the 14 and 19 innings, and I think that's just fine with AJ Hinch. Oh, yeah. We Good. talk about pitching limits, innings limits. The way you cut down on the amount of pitches you're throwing in the game is not trying to punch everybody out. He has punch out stuff. But he's starting to get some of those guys out earlier in counts because he's been in the strike zone earlier, forcing hitters to swing earlier. When he needed a strike out in that last start against Derek Dietrich, right after George Springer lost the ball in the lights, putting runners on second and third, he was able to go to the well and get a big strikeout with that power curve. Well, and I'll tell you what, as a hitter, and you're going up against a guy who is a high strikeout guy, you will swing earlier in the count to avoid getting to that two strike count. Morton with a 2 2 count on Martinez. And misses a little bit away. It's 3 and 2. Charlie's seen a good pitch count right up the last couple of innings. It was 44 after 3. He's now up to 93 pitches as we begin the sixth inning. In the air center field, Springer doesn't have to move very far. 
Ford puts it away for the first half. Astros have a pretty good one two punch at the top of their rotation. You can see nine starts apiece between Dallas Keuchel and Lance McCullers. But how about that record? 11 and 1. ERAs have been great, but the ground ball percentage, those guys, when they're playing defense behind them, are on their toes, ready to bounce. They can also go to the strikeout when they need it. But how about the only Lance McCullers only being six strikeouts ahead of Dallas Keuchel? Yeah, Lance's numbers, as you mentioned, not the big strikeout numbers we're used to, but very effective in his last three starts. Anaheim Yankee Stadium and Marlins Park. And it's big for those two guys to give innings because the three, four, five guys have at times gone deep, but it hasn't been with any consistency. So you use up the bullpen a little bit, and then you can go back to Dallas and Lance and try and give your bullpen a breather. The Astros came through that road trip in good fashion, especially considering they had five games in the final 72 hours of that trip. Yeah, it's been a real blessing to have those guys at the top of the rotation, but it begs that question what do you do after that? Because you said the inconsistencies, trying to find the right matchups and get those guys in the best position to succeed. This ball is hit deep to right field. This is the third home run of the game for the Indians. Lonnie Chisenhall, who hit the ball hard his first two times and resulted in outs, hits the ball hard where nobody can field it over the wall at right. 0 2 pitch. Chisenhall's fifth of the year, and it's now a 4 to 2 Indians lead. A couple of fastballs that have been hit have been up in the zone. Saw Josh Reddick hit an 0-2 pitch out for the Astros earlier. Now Chisenhall answers with an 0-2 home run. Morton had only allowed four home runs in his previous eight starts. But he's allowed three tonight. Had a two home run game against the A's. Gave up a home run to Gene Segura. And his first start of the year against Seattle and then gave up one against the Yankees with a big lead. And now he's down four to two with all the runs scoring on home runs tonight. And Carnacion a two run home run. Kipnis and Chisholm all solo shots. One and two the count to Bradley Zimmer. As Charlie has thrown his 100th pitch of the night. His high on the season is 102 in his last start in New York. Charlie and Mike Byers went five and two thirds innings in that doubleheader. Now the pitch misses inside. It's two and two. Zimmer 0 for two tonight. Ground down in the strikeout. Pitch down and away. Three and two. Third time through the lineup, the Indians have four extra base hits of the seven batters Morton has faced. Two doubles, two home runs. Time is called by the rookie Zimmer. Next pitch will be the highest pitch total of the season for Charlie Morton. 103 is outside ball four. Zimmer is a one out base runner second walk issued by Charlie and that'll be the end of his night as A.J. Hinch comes out of the dugout. Morton will go five and a third innings and leave with his team down four to two responsible for the runner on first base. James Hoyt will be the new pitcher when we come back we'll tell you more about Hoyt after this.
James Hoyt comes on for the Houston Astros. Hoyt has been very good lately. He'll take over with a runner on first base. And one out in the sixth inning. 30 year old right hander has been doing a really good job out of the Astros bullpen this season. Hoyt started the year at AAA Fresno, was called up when Yandel Gustave went on the DL. Plummer, it's been a lot of fun watching what he's been doing. Yeah, James Hoyt has been very good. It's interesting to look at some of his numbers. When he gets to two strikes, he goes heavy on that slider that he has. 70% of the time, he's gotten a lot of those 18 strikeouts on that slider. So how about the strikeouts per nine inning again? <laughs> These guys coming out of the bullpen, that's legitimate swing and miss type stuff. Hoyt faces the number nine hitter, Roberto Perez, and gets a called strike, nothing in one. Boyd appearing in his seventh game, 18 strikeouts in eight innings of work. Perez struck out twice against Charlie Morton. Runner on the move, ground ball towards short. They avoid the double play with Zimmer on the move. Perez makes the play to first for the second out. League leaders are going to be presented to you by Houston Methodist. You see strikeouts by relievers. The Houston Astros in all of Major League Baseball leading the way with 171 strikeouts. You got Devo, Ken Giles, Will Harris, James Hoyt getting in on the action. Brad Peacock even with a high strikeout per nine inning rate. It's good stuff coming out of the Astros bullpen. It's nice when they can come in with inherited runs like you were talking about with James Hoyt and get that punch out to get him out of innings. That they really do have up and down the board swing and miss stuff to lead in that category. And then you look at the strikeouts per inning pitch. I mean, Hoyt's off the charts with the 18 and 8 innings, and Devo 44 and 24 and a third innings. Mentioned those other guys. Even Michael Feliz has five more strikeouts than innings pitch. He got 21 strikeouts and 15 and a third. Oh, Hoyt trying to get the final out here and keep this at a 4 2 game. Jason Kipnis hit a solo home run his last time up. Hits the ball on one hop to Altuve, who makes the play, and that'll do it for the Indians. So Hoyt comes in and gets a couple of ground outs. We're through five and a half. Indians lead 4 2. Fans wearing the fedoras tonight looking for an Astros rally here down 4 2 in the sixth inning. Facing Trevor Bauer in the Cleveland Indians. Trevor Bauer has already accomplished something no other pitcher has in Astros history. Picked up a win in his first six starts against the Houston Astros. Art Mahaffey did it against the Colt 45s. Nobody else has done it except for those two. 
in franchise history. A happy streak stopped at six. So Bauer now with a 4 2 lead facing Jose Altuve, Carlos Correa, and Carlos Beltran. The strange thing about this run for Trevor Bauer is he really has dominated the Astros, but not necessarily dominated other teams. His season high in strikeouts as Altuve takes a strike, nothing in one. The season high coming into tonight in strikeouts was eight. And he has topped that with nine tonight. His previous season high came against the Astros in Cleveland. So he's just continuing to pitch well against the Houston Astros and not so well against the rest of the league, which kind of goes against conventional wisdom when you consider the Astros are the second best offense and run scored in the AL. Good thing the Astros aren't in the central. <laughs> Howard won the ball every time he saw the Astros. Two and one to count. Altuve up the middle. Lindor gloves it, spins, throws in time. What a defensive play by the Indian shortstop. That was impressive. Rangy shortstop. Going well to his left and then coming back, coming back and spinning. Not the perfect throw, but enough to get the hustling out to a full extension in the spin move. It almost looked like he was more concerned about the location of the throw than the actual velocity behind it. Nicely done. It's a big out to get out to to start the inning, and now Correa swings and misses. Nothing in one. Francisco Lindor, Carlos Correa, part of the left side of the infield in the WBC for Team Puerto Rico. Lindor was the shortstop. Correa moved over to third. Pitch in the dirt for a ball, one and one. Carlos, so for one, struck out and walked. Astros would love to get something done this inning. The Indians have a tendency when they lead after six to win games. Correa deep to right field, all the way back, the leap. Ball is gone. Home run, Carlos Correa. Opposite field home run, his sixth home run of the year. The Astros back within a run. How big is that play by Francisco Lindor right now? Solo shot for Carlos Correa going off of Taco. If that ball gets past Lindor, we've got a whole new ball game. Chisenhall did not miss making a home run saving catch by Much in right field. Crowd buzzing now as Carlos Beltran steps in there. Which is a call strike, nothing in one. Beltran singled up the middle, scored a run in the first inning, also struck out. Shaw and Boone Logan have been warming this inning for the Cleveland Indians. Beltran on the ground fouls, one ball and two strikes. Fastball away, goes with it. You can see on the replay, it looked like it was off the end of the bat. Watch the location. A little towards the name on the barrel of the bat, but just enough to sneak it out of here at Minute Maid Park. Another opposite field home run for Carlos Correa. I think at least half of his home runs this year have been to right field. He has six. I can remember at least three to right. Beltran wasn't ready for that pitch. Good thing it was a ball because he would have been rung up. It's two and two. Two and two. There's Shaw the righty, Boone Logan the lefty. Indians, when leading after six innings, are a perfect 16 and 0 on the year. That's 
how good their bullpen's been. Alton stays alive. Yeah, that's pretty nasty. That's what saved them in that series out there in Cleveland against the Astros is that they did have those leads late. Astros led 2 0. Indians came back with four. Now Houston with a home run by Correa, making it 4 3. An extended at bat for Carlos Beltran, starting to push Trevor Bauer towards the 100 pitch plateau. As you can see in the strike zone by MD Anderson, nine pitches so far in the AB, trying to hold up. He does, says Joe West, and it counts full. Ten pitch at bat so far, at least one more to come. JB putting Trevor Bauer over the 100 mark, making him work. It playable. Perez throws the mask away. He has room and puts it away for the second out of the inning. Got close. Lonnie Chisenhall. Good job by the fans. That is their territory once it crosses over that yellow line and into the first row. Isn't all try to go up and get it, but the fans were there. Trevor Bauer's night is over with two outs in the sixth inning. He leaves with a 4 3 lead. Back with more after this. Cleared with two outs, a lefty do up in Brian McCann, and the Indians bring in their left-hander, Boone Logan. There's a big left-hander making his 20th appearance, ERA at two. Pretty impressive that he could be out there for his 20th time, and in the first 19 appearances, he's only got nine innings under his belt, so that tells you that he is a lefty specialist, along with Andrew Miller out there. Boone Logan throws hard. He can average 93 to 95 miles an hour, also has a slider, as his secondary pitch, he'll throw that 66% of the time in a two strike count. Normally, you would like to see the lefty on Brian McCann, but this year McCann has done well against lefties, hitting 304, and three of his six home runs have come against left handed pitching. McCann has faced Logan six times in his career. Lone hit was a double his last time they matched up. Brian batting. With two outs and the bases empty in the sixth inning. 
Trevor Bauer goes five and two thirds innings, allows five hits, three earned runs, a couple of home runs, struck out a season high nine and walked one. All strike, one and one. Logan, as Blummer mentioned, likes to throw that slider a lot. Fastball slider mix, about 50 50. There it is, and McCann's down the count one and two. Bauer had retired 10 in a row before the home run by Carlos Correa. An extended 11 pitch at bat by Carlos Beltran before he fouled out, ended. Trevor Bowers night and now Boone Logan on to face the left hand hitting Brian McCann. And Bowers went back. Thirty two year old left hander Boone Logan. Maybe here just to face one batter as Brian Shaw continues to warm in the Indians bullpen. In the dirt, two and two. The dirt. Good take by McCann. Three and two. Big Friday night crowd looking for an Astros rally. We have seen plenty of those this year. Logan and McCann were teammates with the Atlanta Braves in 2009. Now the 3 2 pitch and stays alive. Last three years with the Colorado Rockies, where he signed as a free agent with the Indians in the offseason. Good battling at bat by Brian McCann after being down in the count one and two. Again. Sure, if Logan and Perez were in agreement on that 3 2 pitch. McCann has spoiled a couple of two strike pitches, and the veteran Boone Logan, having played with and against Brian McCann through the years, wants to make sure he doesn't give up something here to Brian. Well, I think it's that last swing he took on a slider. It wasn't the best slider we've seen from Boone Logan, but the fact that McCann barreled it up and hit it sharply down that right field line maybe plants a seed of doubt. And either Perez or Logan. Another foul back. Nine pitches into the at bat. So, second straight hitter for the Astros that will have a double digit pitch at bat. Beltron 11, now at least 10 for Brian McCann. Ball four. Great walk taken by Brian McCann with two outs. And that will be the only batter that Boone Logan faces. As walks go, that's about as good as it gets. Lefty on lefty. McCann's a base runner. That's the end of the night for Boone Logan. We'll tell you about Brian Shaw when we come back.
Indians lead 4-3 with the runner on. Bring the whole family to the ballpark this Sunday for Kroger Family Sundays. Special Kroger Family four pack start at just 60 bucks. Visit Astros.com slash Sundays or call 1-877-9-ASTROS for more info. Four three game Indians with the lead new pitcher is Brian Shaw. Brian Shaw throws a cutter 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 <laughs> and a slider every once in a while does feel hard in the low to mid 90s. See the record and the innings pitched now making his 19th appearance. Pretty good ERA underneath too. Yeah, he is cutter mania for sure last appeared in Wednesday's game against the Tampa Bay Rays and now he'll face Yuli Gurriel. Gurriel's faced him three times in his career. Ryan McCann on first base with two outs in the sixth inning. And there's a call strike nothing in one. Terry Francona has quite the weaponry out of his bullpen. Guys like Ryan Shaw and Cody Allen at the back end, Andrew Miller wherever he wants, ground ball towards short. Flip to kick this by Lindor, and that'll do it for the Astro. Houston gets one back. 4 3. Trailing the Indians by one. It's time to reveal the winner of our Chevy Stroke Poll. Thanks for voting in our Stroke Poll. Remember, you can find us on our Twitter page at Root Sports SW. And we asked you how you're feeling about the Astros' 29 and 12 start. All right, 53% of you are all in World Series or bust. I like our fans. That's good stuff. 35% cautiously, cautiously optimistic. 42 games in. Well, it will be after tonight. Long way to go, but it's been fun so far, guys. It has been. Over half of the Stropole participants are all in. A third are cautiously optimistic as we start the seventh inning. James Hoyt's first full inning of work. He retired both batters he faced last half. Francisco Lindor, Michael Brantley, Carlos Santana. I think as this season has gone along, and Hoyt's now appearing in his seventh game. There is more and more confidence from A.J. Hinch to his right hander who started the year in the minor leagues. This is a big spot in the game with two three and four in a one run game. No you're exactly right he's earned the right to be out there. Talked about the high strikeout percentage for James White doing a good job with that fastball slider. He also has a good split finger that might be why he's out there matched up against a couple of lefties. I know that Lindor is a switch hitter but hitting left handed in the air to left. Sends Aoki back to right about the edge of the warning track. Makes the play for the first out. Well, for James Hoyt, he felt like I've done everything I can at Triple A Fresno. Saved games 29 last year. He's off to a great start this year again, and he's never had a chance to really pitch an extended 
stretches here at the big league level 22 innings last year in 22 games and it looks like he's going to be here for a while. That would be nice if he could because in order to stay here pitching like this will that'll make that happen. That split finger against left handers is a good pitch for him to have. And his story is quite remarkable going through the Mexican League and independent leagues and paying for tryouts. <laughs> Jose Canseco is his manager. You endure that. You, you, don't, you belong here. He's had a different tour to the big leagues than most. And congratulations to him to be at this big league level now and get the job done. One out now facing the Indians. Number three hitter Michael Brantley with a 2 0 count. There were definitely various points of James Hoyt's career where he could have said, you know what, I'm not sure this is what's for me, but he stayed with it. Perseverance has paid off. 2 0 pitches rip foul, getting out of the way is Lance Barnett, the first base umpire. So that guy, that little area has got at least two or three foul balls now. Yeah, you got to be ready down there. I saw that guy earlier. Dora to his right got one earlier. If you're on that front row, Minute Maid Park, glove's not a bad idea. He's alive. Two and one the count to Brantley. Brantley doubled in three at bats against Charlie Morton. There's a strike perfectly placed on the corner, two and two. No action in the Indians bullpen. Brian Shaw will be on to pitch the seventh as he came on to get the final out of the sixth inning. Brantley's dangerous with two strikes. We mentioned it after that double in the first inning. Hitting over 290 with two strikes. I'll tell you what, what's interesting about James Hoyt is even though as good as that split finger is against lefties, he throws that slider more often. There it is, bouncing it in there, two and two. Well, that pitch has become his big pitch this year. Especially when he gets a strikeout opportunity. He throws it 70% of the time when he has two strikes on a hitter. But now it's three and two. See how he attacks Michael Brantley. Just missed the corner. Ball four. Did not miss by much. One out walk issued to Brantley. That's a tough pitch to take. RBI Baseball 2017 returns with fast paced MLB action packed with all your favorite teams, players, ballparks, and much more. Get RBI Baseball today for Xbox One, PlayStation 4. And mobile devices. Learn more at rbigame.com. Runner on first with one out, and Carlos Santana the batter. Carlos takes the pitch away for a ball, one and zero. See what Santana's done tonight. Walked and scored in the fourth. Came around on the Edwin Encarnacion home run. Also doubled in the fifth inning. All four runs scored in this game by Cleveland have come via the long ball. A little unusual night for Charlie Morton with three home runs allowed. We mentioned tonight was his 170th start. I have to go back about over 130 starts ago when he allowed three or more home runs. That came. In 2010, in San Francisco, as a member of the Pittsburgh Pirates, excuse me, as a member of the Atlanta Braves, April 14, 2010, when he allowed three home runs to the Giants in that game. He was a member of the Pittsburgh Pirates that year. Started his career in Atlanta. In 2010, he was a Bucko. Aubrey Huff, Eli Whiteside, and Aaron Rowan. So Morton allows three home runs tonight. Allow, last time that happened was over seven years ago. Good note from Phil Boudreau. So an unusual night in terms of the long ball issued by Morton. The Astros are only down one as we play in the seventh. Carlos Santana chops one foul. 
Counts two and two on the first baseman for the Indians. Every one of these games this year between the Astros and the Indians has felt about the same. Tight throughout. Two playoff hopefuls. The move is Brantley and the pitch is low. The count goes full. Stolen base number four on the season for Brantley. Gets Santana swinging out number two, first strikeout for James Hoyt. Threw that dead fish in there, looks good to hit, and then just falls out of the zone. So Hoyt ends his night with a strikeout. AJ Hinch to the mound. We'll tell you about the new Astros reliever when we come back. It's 4 3 Cleveland. On second base, and AJ Hinch hands the ball from James Hoyt to Michael Feliz. As you take a look at Michael's numbers, know that he is a flamethrower coming out of that Houston Astro bullpen, averaging 96.2 miles an hour on that heater. He's got a great ERA, also a very good strikeout to walk ratio with his 21 punch outs. The opponent batting average is at a buck 75. When he gets ahead in the count, he likes to throw that slider. And he'll face Edwin Encarnacion as the first batter he sees. Encarnacion sent that one right into the Crawford boxes in front of our left field camera for a two run home run that tied the game in the fourth inning. And here he is batting for the fourth time tonight. Encarnacion one for three with that two run shot. So Feliz trying to keep this at a one run game with Michael Brantley on second base and two outs. There's a Fastball for a call strike, nothing and one. Brantley with a stolen base to get into scoring position. Encarnacion coming in with 14 runs batted in on the season, coupled tonight. Hitting just 108 with runners in scoring position on the season. One and one the count. The Lee's 23 year old right hander. Former mentioned with that high octane fastball. Third pitcher of the night for the Astros. Horton for five and a third. Hoyton, Hoyt for an inning and a third. 
And now Feliz trying to get the last out of the seventh ahead of the count one and two. Feliz does like that slider with two strikes ahead one and two. Instead it's a fastball upstairs at 96 two and two. I like it. Encarnacion hit that breaking ball out off of Charlie Borden. Throughout the night we've seen him have a tough time catching up to the heater 95 plus. But in elevating the fastball maybe speed the eyes up and raise that eye level maybe snap a slider off down below the zone and get him to chase. Fastball crushed but foul into the upper deck and through the upper deck towards the train tracks. A long foul by Encarnacion. That ball was smoked. Encarnacion guessed right. Kind of disappeared there over that. Section in the upper deck. Well, McCann went out after that loud foul and had a word for Feliz. We'll see how they attack Encarnacion here with a 2 2 count. Ball may have ended up in the pro shop. Pickoff attempt and a good thing out to Bay with a quick maneuver to make sure that ball didn't go into the outfield. I wasn't a big fan of asking for pickoffs when guys throw 98 plus. <laughs> After <laughs> number one, it's going to hurt my hand. Number two, I don't know where it's going. 2 2 pitch, he gets Encarnacion swinging. Blazing fastball to end the inning. And we are through six and a half, seventh inning stretch time at Minute Bay Park. It's 4 3 Cleveland. Seven. And it's already time, baseball fans. The 2017 Easter and MLB All-Star Game ballot is here. Head to Astros.com slash vote to choose your ASG worthy stars and send them to the All-Star Game presented by MasterCard on July 11th in Miami. Late in April is when the last time these two teams met, Astros dropping two of three in that series. But since then, they've won six consecutive series. What's been the difference since seeing these this particular Indian team well, AJ Hinch said you know we didn't play great defense in that last series. We also learned that we have to play great every day. We have to come out and play a complete games play our game. And that's exactly what they've done guys. They have felt really good since that particular series a, a more complete wins for this group. We've seen it from the pitching. We've seen it from the offense. Uh, but he did say this time around this is a tough team and there's probably going to be close games again. Here we are again a one run game. Bregman to center field. 
Bradley Zimmer is back there and puts it away for the first down. Well, Julie is right. This is a tough team, and it especially gets tough, Blummer, when you get to the seventh inning and you trail because Terry Francona has a lot of weapons, including Brian Shaw, that are very effective in his bullpen. No, those guys are great. That's what this ball club is built for. Got them deep into the World Series last year. You can see his bullpen. Their ERA leads the major leagues. The opponent batting average is third in Major League Baseball. Even if they do get base runners on, they rarely allow them to come in and score. Nori Aoki, the batter, with one out and nobody on. Since the 20th of April, so 24 games ago, that ERA even better, a 104 ERA for the Indians. Lead after six innings, they're 13 and 0. Lead after seven innings, they're 16 and 0. Meanwhile, the Astros is kind of like the immovable object against the irresistible force because the Astros really are able to score a lot of runs from the seventh inning on, and they're eight and eight when trailing after six innings. You got a team that's 13 and 0. It's almost automatic when they lead after six against a team that's basically a 500 team when trailing after six. I mean, eight and eight after trailing after six is phenomenal. Yeah, it is. AJ Hinch's team never feels like they're out of it. Two one pitches down and in. Oki with a three and one count. George Springer waiting on deck. Broken bat will it find a spot. Kipnis goes out over the shoulder. Catch by the Indian second baseman. Play. It looked like a fade route into the back corner of the end zone. It gently lofted over his shoulder, but he never took his eye off. That was a great play. Well done by Kipnis. We saw Francisco Lindor make a very good play earlier in this game to retire Jose Altuve. The middle of the Indians defense in the infield doing the job and here's George Springer. He had a highlight real catch but at the plate looking for his first hit. 0 for 3 a couple of strikeouts against the starter Trevor Bauer. Bauer struck out a season high while he was in there in five and two thirds innings. Swing and a miss one and one. Four runs on eight hits for the Indians, three runs on five hits for the Astros. All strike one and two. Indians playing their 40th game of the year, so they basically have reached the one quarter point of the season. Shaw appearing in his 19th game. Nothing new for Shaw. He appears in 70 plus games every year. One two pitch. Springer called out on strikes. George thought that was low and has an extra word or two for Jim Reynolds. So Shaw gets through the seventh inning in one two three fashion. And the Indians still lead four to three.
the eighth inning. Time now to play Name That Astro, presented by your local Honda dealer. Who am I? Played for both these two teams, the Indians and the Astros, a World Series champion in 2000. Sun drafted in the seventh round of the 2015 first year player draft. Send your guesses or answers to Aproot Sports SW. Nothing and won the count to Jose Ramirez. Michael Feliz on for his first full inning of work. Struck out Edwin Encarnacion on a fastball to end the seven. Facing six, seven, and eight in the Indians lineup. You have that name, that Astro? Yeah. Is it done? I do. Hummer is good at this game. One and won the count. Ramirez lined out, singled, and wide to center. In the air to left center, sending Aoki all the way back to the track. Still back, it's over his head and against the wall. Springer can't play it. Aoki tries to get it back in. And into third base, head first, goes Jose Ramirez with a leadoff triple. Trying to track the ball and find the corners of Minute Maid Park in left field can be tough, even for the home player. Good job by Jose Ramirez going the other way with that fastball. Proving to be a good hitter here for the Cleveland Indians. It drives it to that opposite field gap, and you can see Aoki giving it an effort. Second triple of the season for Ramirez. First is a left hand hitter. And here's Lonnie Chisenhall with the infield in. Chisenhall takes a called strike. Chisenhall hit the ball hard three times against Charlie Morton. Sharp ground ball, line out to center, and then a home run. His home run gave Cleveland a 4 2 lead. Inside for a ball, 1 and 1. 99 on that last delivery from Michael Feliz. One one pitch high in the air deep enough to score the run long run for Springer. He's going to get there and make the catch tagging scoring easily as Ramirez and the Indians now lead by three. Well, never easy to come back on their bullpen. You were hoping to keep it at a one run game it's now a two run cushion. The bad news is Andrew Miller and their closer Cody Allen with the Indians losing the last two games of that series to Tampa Bay they have not pitched since Monday. So they are well rested heading into this series. Here's Bradley Zimmer. Pitch down low for a ball one and oh. Zimmer in his third major league game 0 for 2 with a walk. 2 for 9 now with that. Home run is final at bat Wednesday. Andrew Miller starting to get loose in the Indians bullpen in this two run game. Now it's one and two. Look at Andrew Miller. Remember last time we were in Cleveland, the Astros actually strung together three straight hits off of Cody Allen, the closer for the Cleveland Indians. So there is hope. Well, the Astros have done damage against a lot of bullpen this year. Yes, they have. There's, There's very few that are like the Cleveland Indians. I was going to say, a two run lead with most bullpen is a little different than a two run lead with the Indians bullpen. As Belize gets Bradley Zimmer on the strikeout. Plumber, we thought we'd have a good crowd tonight. Yes. 36,446. Nice. Huge Friday night. Go ahead and say that number again. That's nice. 36,446. Good to see people in the Houston vicinity getting a chance to watch some first place baseball. A lot of fans showing up on a Friday night. We're expecting big crowds all weekend. It's going to be a good weekend. School's starting to wind down. Everybody's hopes are eternal with the way these guys are playing. 
Fun team to watch. Really fun team to watch. They never are out of any game. Or one pitch is down low for a ball. Well, they're never out of any game, but I also appreciate the fact going through New York and knowing as good as New York was, the Astros actually did play better baseball for them. Fundamentally, they looked good. They set up their bullpen great. The starting pitching was phenomenal. The timely hitting was great. And then we saw just an absolute bash session that last game when they came out hitting all those bombs in the first inning. So you kind of saw every bit and piece of the Houston Astros on this road trip. And then go down to Miami where you really could have had what AJ calls a trap series where you just kind of have some letdowns. They haven't let down at all. They were down in that first game, one nothing through five. Dan Straley leaves the game, former Astro, being hit on the forearm with a line drive. Yuli Gurriel hits a grand slam against Junichi Tozawa, and the Astros didn't trail in any other inning the rest of the series. They led in every inning from that point forward. And it really looked like Miami just completely deflated when Straley came out, and then right after that home run from Gurriel, I'm not saying they mailed it in, but they were definitely defeated early. 3 1 pitch is fouled back at 3 and 2. Alberto Perez, the hitter, is 0 for 3. Astros winning 9 out of 10. The team that's behind them in the AL West has won tonight. The Texas Rangers have won for the 10th consecutive time. They win in Detroit 5 to 3. The Rangers are playing great baseball, but can only marginally. Improve on their games back because the Astros are playing so well. Three and two the count, two outs, bases cleared in a two run game. Strikes out the last two he faces. That's now three strikeouts for Feliz in an inning and a third. We head to the bottom of the eighth. Two run game. Time brought to you by Miller Lite. Got a couple of bombs. Josh Reddick, happy to be back here in Minute Maid Park, turns on that cutter in and bombs it off Trevor Bauer to right field. Then Carlos Correa going to the same section, just over the outstretched arm of Lonnie Chisenhall. A couple of runs on the board via the home run for the Houston Astros. Now the task is try and solve Andrew Miller in the bottom half of the eighth inning. He's the new pitcher for the Cleveland Indians. Phenomenal numbers on the year. For Andrew Miller, 2-0 record, making his 17th appearance. 
Fran Conan not afraid to go to him multiple times, but I would read those ERA and whip numbers if I could see them. They are quite small. He's been dominant, as you would imagine, one of the best relievers in the game today, if not the best, as he can fulfill a multiple of roles for Terry Francona. First batter he was scheduled to face is Josh Reddick. Instead, he gets the pinch hitter, Marwin Gonzalez. Josh actually had a pretty good AB off him in Cleveland last time these guys faced. Marwin takes a call strike, nothing in one. Going for the matchup. Never easy for anybody against Andrew Miller. Carlos Beltran has about as good a numbers as anybody on the Astros against Andrew. Four for ten with three doubles. That's pretty darn good. All strike, nothing in two. Brian Shaw got four outs. And in inning in a third, starting with two outs in the sixth inning, retired all four batters he faced. Usually the formula is Shaw leading into Miller, leading into Allen. 0 2 pitch, Marlin stays alive. In that game that Miller pitched Monday, went an inning in two thirds, did allow a run in that game. Held on to win eight to seven. Tried to hold up on the 0 2. He does one and two. Swinging for the first out of the eighth inning. Slider's a great pitch for Andrew Miller. You see right there, very effective down and in. With Marlin to swing over the top. How about an interesting stat on Andrew Miller as far as splits are concerned? Lefties hitting 217 off him, right handers hitting only 114. In his career? No, that's just this year. Just this year, yeah. yeah let's go ahead and look up the career numbers, but I was just. Lefties have hit him a little bit better this year than right hand hitters. That's incredible. And it's not like 217 is anything to brag about, but that's all right. Five for 20. I'm going to brag about 217 <laughs> if you're hitting a buck 14. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, but it's not like he's getting raked. In his career, lefties have hit 234, righties have hit 243. So a relatively close split as far as career numbers are concerned, but you can see what that slider does to right-handers, causes them fits. He throws that slider 71 percent of the time with two strikes. Somehow, how Tuve's never faced Andrew Miller before, at least at the big league level. Tuve to Lindor, two outs. <laughs> Looking for something to cheer about. Last time they had something to cheer about was Carlos Correa with a home run to right field his last time up. That slider down and in on the right hand hitter, swinging a miss, nothing in one. Chisenhall is there to retire Correa and to end the eighth inning. One, two, three inning for Andrew Miller. Five, three.
three. It's time to name that Astro presented by your local Honda dealer. We asked you for the player who played for the Indians and the Astros with the world champion in 2000, had a son drafted in the seventh round of the 2015 first year player draft. Jose Vizcaino, another great teammate, played with him here in, with the Houston Astros. Had a good run with the New York Yankees, winning that World Series. I believe with them in 2000. Not entirely sure, to be honest with you, but I know he had a good run with them. But his son, Jose Vizcaino, got drafted in 2015 in that seventh round. There you go, our name that Astro today, Jose Vizcaino, as we turn to the ninth inning. The new pitcher is Brad Peacock. It was with the Yankees. Whew. Brad Peacock doing a good job. That whip right at one, but the 21 strikeouts are very nice to see. Fastball, the slider has been very effective for him this year. Peacock will face the top of the Cleveland Indians order. Mason Kitten is batting for the fifth time. He had one of the three home runs for the Indians in this game. Takes a call strike, it's one and one. Here's the defensive changes for the Astros after Marwin Gonzalez pinch hit. He stayed in the game. He's going to play left. Norioki moves from left field to right field. As Josh Reddick was lifted for a pinch hitter. Pitch misses. It's two and one. Kipnis has got things rolling lately. He had six RBIs in the six game homestand in the home run today. So. Seven of his 13 RBIs have come in the last seven games. On the ground, Guriel will take it himself. Tip is retired for the first out of the ninth inning. Astros have only lost two series all year long. One at home to the Kansas City Royals way back in the first week of the season. And the Cleveland Indians took two out of three in that series three weeks ago at Progressive Field in Cleveland. Astros won a two run game and the Indians won a couple of one run games. Everything's been pretty close throughout these first four games against Cleveland and Houston. This will be the last time these two teams face each other perhaps this year. At least in the regular season. In the regular season. Nothing in one to Francisco Lindor. And now it's 0 and 2. Lindor hit by a pitch, reached on an error, doubled, and flied out. One for three. Tried to score from third on a pitch to the backstop. And Charlie Morton did a good job covering the plate and blocking the plate. Guriel's going to need help from Peacock. Brad's there to cover and the flip in time for the second half. Join us on Sunday, June 11th, for the Astros Foundation Picnic in the Park, presented by Pluckers. Enjoy a picnic style buffet, games, and an autograph session on the field. Proceeds benefit youth baseball and softball in the Houston area. Visit Astros.com slash picnic. Or call 1 877 9 Astros for more information. Bring your fedora. <laughs> we got some in the booth. Can't wait. I'm going to have to do a rally fedora tonight. I'm in. I'm in. If you're looking ahead to the bottom of the night, the Astros will have Carlos Beltran, Brian McCann, and Yuli Guriel do up. Cody Allen is warming and ready in the Indians' bullpen. One another count to Michael Brantley. Brantley doubled, walked, stole a base. Astros led this game two to nothing. Indians scored the next four. Houston cut the lead to one on a home run by Carlos Correa, and then the Indians made it five to three on a triple and sacrifice fly in the eighth inning. Two and zero the count to Brantley. Indians had lost five out of seven coming into tonight. Going two and four on that last homestand. And Cleveland knew they had to play some of their best baseball 
in this Houston series. Rio pitches a strike, three and one. Just missed the corner. Two out walk issued to Michael Brantley. Well, the Indians have looked pretty good tonight. They haven't played necessarily this well the past week or so, right, Julia? No, they haven't been feeling really good coming up into this series. They actually had a had a team meeting today, and then they had a separate meeting for their starting pitchers that ran right up until stretch time. But Tito was saying before the game, he didn't want to wait too long. He didn't want to end up venting about this. It doesn't do any good. So he wanted to meet with his club. He said there's been a lot of inconsistencies with our team. And so the message to them was to keep fighting for what they believe in. And, and this is the series that they, they look to play up and get themselves going. You know, you always wonder when a good time is to hold a team meeting and mentioned they had struggled five out of seven, but now facing the Astros. And if they can play well in this series, they can use that as kind of a calling card. Hey, you know, we just lost two out of three at home to the Rays and to the Twins, but go on the road and if you can beat Houston now, all of a sudden you feel like you're back on track. The best team in baseball is wearing that orange top tonight. So why not use them as a target? And that's what the Astros have presented themselves with as being that target in baseball. How do they match up against these guys and how do they play against these guys is what's going to determine their future too. I'm sure part of the message too is yes they're 29 and 12. Yes they're the best team in baseball in 2017. But right now we're the defending champions and we need to play like the defending champions that we played in 2016. And so far tonight they played a pretty clean game hitting three home runs getting another solid outing out of Trevor Bauer. If the Astros fail to rally in the ninth inning Trevor Bauer will be seven and zero in seven starts against Houston. No pitcher in the history of this franchise facing the Astros has ever done that. Bauer allowed in five and two thirds innings he allowed three runs. Swing and a miss one ball and two strikes to Carlos Santana. Bauer came in here with a 6.82 ERA. If you take the Astros or the two Astros, he now has a 6.65. But if you take the Astros out of those, out of that uh, equation, what does that where does that ERA go? He's Nothing but much higher. His two high strikeout games on the year against Houston takes 17 punch outs away from him too. It's amazing Bauer against the Houston Astros year in and year out. But the Astros still have the bottom of the night to work with to try and spoil that record. First things first, Brad Peacock needs to, needs to get Carlos Santana here. Two strikes. Swing and a miss. He does. Peacock with a strikeout of Santana. We head to the bottom half of the ninth inning. The Astros down two. Carlos Beltran, Brian McCann, and Yuli Gurriel, the first three.
is presented by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. And by the original light beer, Miller Lite, hold true. Bottom half of the ninth inning. Oh, nice. That's one way to wear the rally fedora. Carlos Beltran, Brian McCann, Yuli Gurriel. Julie Morales with the rally fedora. I'm ready. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm wearing this the right way. You try wearing it with a headset on. Oh, yeah. yeah it's a little harder with better. Headset. Yeah, we got to make there some adjustments, go. but. Uh, you guys look sharp. Fedora. Yeah, I've kind we've of had a plaid thing going on. We've had the rally hopper earlier in the year. Here we go. So now we're, we're going to rally fedora. Make it happen. There we go. 36,446. And a good luck kiss to start the bottom of the ninth inning. Carlos Beltran to lead things off. Beltran one for three, facing the closer for the Cleveland Indians, Cody Allen. Pitch misses for a ball, 1 0. Oh. Allen on after a 1 2 3 inning by Andrew Miller and a four batter, four retired stint by Brian Shaw. Popped up, shallow left. Out goes Ramirez. On comes Brantley. It's Ramirez who makes the play. We've seen great plays defensively by the Cleveland infield. That was a nice one by Jose Ramirez. Yeah, these shifts create all kinds of issues and puts guys some guys out of position but it's nice to have an athlete like Jose Ramirez going out there to pick up your left fielder. How about that last little peek by Jose Ramirez trying to recognize where Brantley is understanding that he had no shot at it just went for it. Here's Brian McCann. McCann fouls one back. It's not an easy play. We've seen Kipnis make a nice over the shoulder play. We've seen Ramirez now make a nice over the shoulder play. We've seen Lindor, Rob Jose Altuve have a base hit. Indians infield has been stellar tonight. Nothing in one to Brian McCann. McCann pops one up almost the same spot. Back goes Ramirez again. This time he's calling off Brantley and makes the catch for out number two. Don't forget, coming up after the game is the Astros post-game show. Kevin Eschenfelder, Mike Stanton will host. The Indians go deep three times tonight. Trevor Bauer came on for his seventh start against the Houston Astros and is looking to stay a perfect 7-0. Julia Morales, with or without the fedora, will be gathering interviews in the Astros clubhouse, including the manager, A.J. Hinch. Pitches away to Yuli Gurriel for a ball 1-0. Yuli looking for his first hit tonight. He's 0 for 3. Guriel has never faced the closer for the Indians, Cody Allen. Line drive into center field. On comes Zimmer, makes the play, and that'll do it. The Indians win this game 5 to 3 as they take the opener of this three game weekend series. As their bullpen once again comes in and